In the graphic novel Kingdom Kong, we find one of the most intense battles ever seen in the MonsterVerse. A Titan prophesies to return, bringing chaos and death, and the one technically responsible for the destruction of Skull Island, Titanus Kamazots. Today, we will learn about the origins of this kaiju and where he stands in the MonsterVerse timeline. Join us as we cover his fight against Kong in detail to find out the truth about how powerful this Titan really is. If this is your first time here, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to not miss any of our episodes. Goji Center presents Titanus Kamazot's Titan In-Depth Analysis. Before we witness this kaiju fight, let's very quickly talk about how you can also throw some stuff into the arena. Introducing Dragon City, a free-to-play mobile game that lets you collect thousands of unique dragons, each with different rarities and superpowers. To play, click on this link below. In this game, your job is to collect food, gold, and gems to upgrade your city to higher levels while breeding and hatching your own dragons to put them into the arena. Pump these guys with tons of battle experience while teaching them cool attacks. A better way to do this is by beating up other people people's dragons in PvP fights. It's more fun that way. <laughs> you can also become a member of an alliance where members can get access to cool upgrades for your dragons, chests, and other rewards. But there's more. The Battle Pass will give you access to mini games that will fill your coffers with resources and more dragons. Some of these are dragon versions of YouTubers you already know. Want to hear more good news? Because you Goji fans are so freaking awesome, Dragon City is giving you guys a serious starter bonus. To get it, click on the link or scan this QR code to get 15,000 food, 30 thousand gold and the flame knight dragon so make sure you go out there kick some butt and show these other players that we can raise the best dragons thanks to dragon city for supporting this channel and now let's get back to kamazots number one the timeline the word kamazots originates from a mesoamerican word that literally means death bat this so-called Kamazots was a deity worshipped by the ancient Mayans and Zapotec natives near the lower regions of Mexico and Central America. This dude was synonymous with night, blood, death, and sacrifice. Precisely the type of stuff that describes our modern MonsterVerse rendition of Titanus Kamazots. This Titan, according to the MonsterVerse timeline, first appeared on the Earth's surface during the cataclysmic events that happened in 2019. Unlike the other 17 Titans and counting, this kaiju was not held in a monarch facility. This was one of those kaiju that appeared out of nowhere and was not accounted for. It's currently unknown where this Titan first surfaced from, but here's what we do know. In the graphic novel Kingdom Kong, it is mentioned that this kaiju resided somewhere near an entrance to the Hollow Earth. So after the events of 2019 were over, Kamazots retreated back to this layer of the Earth and somehow found its way underneath one of Skull Island's caverns. But not just any cavern. The cave that Kamazots landed on was the one that held a vile vortex, similar to the one that appeared in GVK in Antarctica. Yes, Skull Island had one of these too, but this one was classified. Another important event that is currently going on is the fact that there were a few storms that Ghidorah left behind. You may remember the scene when Ghidorah and Rodan had their first confrontation. This storm never went anywhere. In fact, this one headed straight to Skull Island, traveling through the Pacific Ocean and making landfall right where this vortex was. But why? Upon further observation, Dr. Brooks here figured out that something was traveling in and out of the vile vortex, causing tremors to occur and further attracting this storm closer to the island. But what, or who, was penetrating this vortex's veil? This was none other than Titanus Kamazots. That's right, folks, this is why Skull Island turned into this stormy hell that we witnessed in GVK. Why is this important? Remember, Kamazots being a bat titan thrives in areas where there is no sunlight. An island blotted out of the sun by a storm would then allow Kamazots to come out and proceed its warpath of death and destruction. In the book, Kamazots was the titan who pierced this vile vortex, causing tremors along the island and also bringing the storm to Skull Island. During the storm's arrival, an excavation team blasted a hole to access this vile vortex underneath Skull Island. It just so happened to be right where Kamazots was resting. Upon waking up, Kamazots now saw his opportunity to arise, thanks to the storms that were covering the sun, setting the stage for a fight against Kong. Number 2. The Fight 
Before we begin analyzing this fight, let's first quickly run through this titan's corporal stats. This kaiju measures a massive 164 feet while standing and has a wingspan of around 402 feet. There are no specifications on how heavy this kaiju is, but because it can go airborne, we can guess that this kaiju was much lighter than its opponent. Its armor is made of lightweight, ultra-resistant material, flexible enough to also be used as a weapon. Let's not forget to mention these little guys. These don't have an official name, but are basically miniature versions or minions that follow this titan's commands, always accompanying him wherever he goes and while doing his bidding. Titanus Kamazots first flies out of the cavern with its army. Immediately, Kong replies with his chest-pounding intimidation display. Kong, being a tool user, quickly looks around for a way to bring down this airborne kaiju. When throwing this massive object, Kamazots dodges this and lets out its signature weapon, the Sonic Screech. This is a roar that causes a sound so loud that it is mentioned that it can disorient titans and could have some serious effects if this is prolonged. Which is what happened to Kong. Upon feeling disoriented, Kamazots quickly grabs Kong by the shoulders using its sharp talons, carrying him in the air only to drop him from a high altitude onto the ground. The fighter squadron realized that Kong was having trouble facing Kamazots, and quite frankly, he was. Facing an airborne kaiju with melee capabilities was going to be out of Kong's comfort zone. While the jets are fighting off the smaller Kamazot minions, Titanus Kamazots flies close to Kong once again to repeat the same maneuver. But this time, Kong jumps up and grabs Kamazots by its horns, allowing him to slam the entire Titan onto the ground, where he would now have an advantage. As Kong goes down to try and finish off this seemingly disabled Kamazots, this Titan surprises Kong with a new weapon, its tail. This weapon is made up of segmented, hardened layers of armor, allowing it to be used as a whip or another prehensile limb, similar to the Skullcrawler's tail. This tail is strong enough to grip onto Kong's arm and even lift up the entire Titan. Once airborne, Kamazots repeats what he did before, dropping Kong repeatedly to the ground while soaking in a lot of damage. At this point, it was evident that Kong was now being overpowered again. But because the fighter squadron was around, they were able to hit this titan's exposed back right before he overwhelmed Kong. Infuriated, Kamazots quickly turns around and orders his minions to take care of the fighter jets. While Kamazots was ordering them to attack, Kong quickly finds an opportunity to chokehold this kaiju in an attempt to suffocate it. Kong now has Kamazots right where he wants him, but is countered by yet another sonic screech, this time right at Kong's ears. This was so loud that it made Kong's ears bleed. Because this screech was so loud, this pilot briefly lost control of its jet. The screech had interrupted all the comms and navigation aids. Now Kamazots managed to get loose, and now tried to fly high to later plummet and inflict a decisive blow to Kong. Meanwhile, Kong was back on the ground struggling against the overwhelming swarm of minions. Kamazots was preparing to dive into Kong in an attempt to finish him off with a decisive blow, but right before Kamazots reached Kong, the same pilot regained control of her jet and managed to break the sound barrier right in front of Kamazots, causing a flash that instantly blinded him, making this titan lose control and crash hard onto the ground. Upon seeing what had happened, Kong quickly ran up to Kamazots to land blow after blow, similar to what he did later against the Warbat. With Kamazots now defeated, Kong now drags its weakened body close to the hole where it came from. Before getting thrown down, Kamazots made one last attempt to screech at Kong. But right before it managed to roar loud enough, Kong swung at Kamazots with full power, knocking this kaiju unconscious. Kamazots was thrown back down to the caves surrounding the vile vortex while his minions followed their unconscious leader back down to the depths of the earth but the real damage had already been done. Because Kamazots had breached this veil already, the effects of breaching had now caused earthquakes, but most importantly, it had now attracted a devastating storm on Skull Island, making this place uninhabitable. Knowing all this, let's now talk about what the future holds for Titanus Kamazots. Number 3. The Aftermath this is the last we hear about Titanus Kamazots. It is not clear whether he died shortly after Kong sent his body back to the Hollow Earth, 
But if he survived, it is possible that Kamazots, along with its army, could still be lurking in the dark nether regions of the Hollow Earth. Knowing this, it is possible that these two might have yet another confrontation in the near future, especially now that Kong lives in the Hollow Earth. While it is true that Kong was overpowered by this titan, we find that this could have ended differently had Kong possessed a handheld weapon prior to this fight. What do you think would happen if these two titans met again? Do you think Kamazots is the next big MonsterVerse villain? Let us know in the comments! Please subscribe to our channel if you want to see more fun kaiju documentaries, and if you want to see them in Spanish, we got a channel for you as well. Also, a huge thanks to Dragon City for supporting this channel, and don't forget to click on the link in the description or scan this QR code. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.